This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this slim, sexy beast is the Lenovo ThinkPad P53. I'm not being that sarcastic, really. It's just that I know that some of you who watch our channel also more likely prefer consumer laptops that are thin, metal, and sexy. This is not the one for you, so don't even bother making jokes in the comments. I know, you'll still do it. This is an incredibly powerful mobile workstation. That's why it is thick. That's why it's not the sexiest looking thing on the planet. But oh my God, is it powerful and is it expandable? We're going to look at it now. So this is a 15.6 inch mobile workstation. It might look kind of chunky and imposing, but it's actually not that heavy given what's inside. It's 5.5 pounds, which is about two and a half kilograms. And yes, just like you can see, it's about an inch thick or 24.5 millimeters. Inside we have Intel ninth generation 45 watt CPUs, and you have an Intel Xeon option as well. Also ninth generation eighth core for that. You can get a core i5, you can get the usual core i7 that you'll also find in gaming laptops, and the core i9 eight core option. The H, not the HK overclockable there. For graphics, we do have switchable graphics, and you're actually going to use the BIOS setting if you want to not have switchable graphics. So if you're on the go and you need better battery life, stay with switchable. If you want dedicated GPU all the time, there's a BIOS setting to enable that. So you can get the old-fashioned NVIDIA Quadro T1000 and 2000 cards at the lower end, but the more interesting thing here is the new Quadro RTX card. So we have the Quadro RTX 3000, which you'll find in competitors like the old Precision and the HP ZBook. But what you won't find in their 15-inch laptops is the Quadro RTX 4000 and 5000 Max-Q offerings. Yeah, they're Max-Q, so they're 80 watt instead of the 110 watt to sometimes 150 watt, but what they've done is downclock it a little bit. And the performance, Lenovo says, is about 85% to 90% of a full non-Max-Q version, and so far in our test, that has proved to be the case. For those of you who are not as familiar with Quadro cards, it gets a little easier to figure out where they stand versus the consumer GTX card cards or RTX cards now. So the Quadro RTX 5000 is pretty much on par with the RTX 2080, well, in this case Max-Q, but you get double the VRAM there. You have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. Likewise, the 4000 corresponds to an RTX 2070. The 2060 is akin to the RTX 3000 in Quadro land. You get the idea there. Expandability on this is huge. You've got three M.2 SSD slots. This thing is outdoing gaming laptops, but yet in a fairly small footprint. It's impressive. If you do go with the old school Quadro T1000 or 2000 cards, you can get it with instead two M.2 slots and a two and a half inch hard drive bay. There's just not enough room with the RTX graphics for the card and the cooling. That's why you can't get that option there. You can get up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, DDR4 2666 megahertz, or you'll have the ECC version if you go with the Intel Xeon CPU. So there's four slots. There's two on the bottom. There's an easy access door. We'll take a look at that. And there's two more underneath the keyboard area. So you have to pop up the keyboard to get to those. And that's where Lenovo puts the initial RAM stick, so you don't have to fiddle with that, generally speaking. For Wi-Fi, we have Wi-Fi 6, it's the Intel AX200 card, and 4G LTE is optional as Cat9, which isn't exactly the fastest LTE. I was surprised I didn't go with a more updated LTE modem there. There's a white backlit keyboard, the usual ThinkPad keyboard, which is an excellent keyboard with those smile-shaped keys, a little convex design so your fingers just sink right in nicely. It's not super high travel, but it's not as thin as obviously something like a ThinkPad X1 Carbon or anything like that. By the way, there is also a Lenovo ThinkPad P53S, and that is the slim and light model, the one that always confuses me as a mobile workstation when manufacturers do this because it actually has Ultrabook CPUs inside and lesser graphics, so I'm not sure why that's done. For biometrics, the ThinkPad has a fingerprint scanner on the keyboard deck and optional Windows Hello IR camera. It comes with two two-watt speakers and they're pretty loud and full. Build quality on this is the usual rugged ThinkPad matte black goodness. It's mill STD A10G for moisture, vibration, shock, all those kinds of things. And the usual fiberglass reinforced polymer casing, but magnesium alloy for the bottom plate on this. They say for better heat dissipation, which means the bottom plate will get toasty because it's transferring the heat. And it hasn't gotten burning hot, even when I was using it for things like blender renders, but it'll get warm. There's plenty of ventilation on the bottom side. This is good. And also outlets on the sides to keep it cool. 
ports on this are excellent. I mean, it's for a 15-inch laptop. You could, you know, sometimes you don't see quite this port selection here. We have Ethernet. We have the nano SIM card slot if you go with LTE. We have two Thunderbolt 3 40 gig gigabit per second ports on the back. There's a full-size SD card slot. There's HDMI 2.0 and, of course, the USB-A ports as well. So certainly well equipped there to travel and also if you want to use a thunderbolt 3 dock yes you can do that or a thunderbolt 3 monitors on the high end of things in terms of performance we have the core i7 model so that's about middle of the pack for what you can get here the, obviously you can go with that core i9 or the intel xeon processor for even more horsepower and i can tell you it just chews through blender renders like nobody's business and this is a laptop for people who do 2 and 3d CAD work modeling and live in autodesk products day in and day out it will do the job. It will do the job well. You won't be missing your desktop back home. For displays, there are four different options. There's two different full HD displays. There's the lower end one. Then there's one that's a little bit brighter, and that's the one that we have. Then there are two 4K displays. One of them is that same 4K OLED panel that we've seen on other 2019 15.6-inch laptops, the same Samsung display, the only Samsung display that's available. That one's 350 nits, so keep that in mind if you're a brightness fan or a brightness freak. Can't tell you how well it's calibrated because we didn't receive it, but given the fact that this is a mobile workstation at the high end, I assume that Lenovo is going to calibrate it pretty well. Why is the OLED not as bright? Because OLED typically consumes more power when displaying whites and light colors, so they didn't probably want to tank battery life by driving this panel any higher. It was really designed to be at home around 350 nits. But if you do want a brighter 4K, there is that option as well, and that's an IPS panel. By the way, all of the displays except for the OLED display are non-touch and matte. The OLED display is a touch screen and it's glossy. This has a 90 watt hour battery and comes with a 230 watt charger with Lenovo's unique design. They say it's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than it has been in the past. Actually, as a 230 watt brick goes, which is common among a whole lot of mobile workstations and gaming laptops, the size and weight aren't that bad. So that's a lot of power. If you're running in NVIDIA Optimus mode, switchable graphics, that means that doing light productivity work and streaming some video, maybe a little bit of Photoshop or just a little, little bit of time in Blender, you know, light, we're talking light here then you should certainly be able to do seven to eight hours on this laptop. If you are doing more heavy duty work, you are doing AutoCAD on the go with it unplugged, if you're doing 3D renders and all that sort of thing, you'll get significantly less battery life. Now, this is with the full HD panel, which is what we have. The 4K panel typically will have shorter battery life, so take about two hours off run times if you go with that 4K panel. Looking at the bottom, there is a lot of ventilation here, obviously, and there's vents coming out on the side and at the rear as well. So this has an access door, which actually comprises most of the bottom of the laptop, so you unscrew seven captive Phillips head screws, and you can remove this magnesium alloy bottom panel. And there's the internal. So under the Mylar here, we have RAM slots, and all of our RAM is underneath in the keyboard area, so we have two open RAM slots available here. And this is where your M.2 SSD drive bays are. We have three in this model, like I said, we, because we have the RTX 5000 graphics card. Your Wi-Fi card is on the opposite side. That's the Intel card. And our battery is over here, 90 watt hour, fairly physically compact though. By the way, if you got the version with the hard drive bay, it would go over here, the hard drive, and the M2 slots, two of them would come out going this way. The slot next to the Wi-Fi card is where the optional 4G LTE module would go. If you want to access the rest of the internals, say you want to repaste it or something like that, then you have to remove the additional Phillips head screws that are not captive. That means they come all the way out, and there's a couple along in the interior frame to take out, like three of those as well. And then you can take off the bottom cover. So that's the ThinkPad. P53 for the mobile workstation line at Lenovo. Like I said, incredibly powerful, very expandable, easy to service, all those things that are good. Thermals are well managed. And compared to the Dell Precision and the HP ZBook family, their little gotcha here is that they actually go higher than NVIDIA Quadro RTX 3000 graphics. Like I said, you can go up to 4000 Max Q and 5000 Max Q. So that sets us apart. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell.